You've probably seen a ton of posts on Instagram and Pinterest that show beautiful brush lettering, and you've probably wondered, how can you do it too? Well, it's as simple as picking up a brush, some watercolors, and getting started. In this video, I will walk you through the basics of lettering with a brush, and I mean a real brush, not a brush marker. You will walk away with basic knowledge on how to start lettering with a brush and some worksheets to get you started. The first thing we need to talk about is watercolor paint. There are more brands than I can count, so I'll just show you what I work with. But you can choose whatever you want and you'll be fine. As a beginner, you really don't need anything expensive at this point. Just as long as it can create a stroke, you're good to go. My favorite ones to practice with are these Artists Loft watercolors. They come in many colors and are perfect for practicing your letters. And they're cheap too. Some watercolors come in tubes, so all you need is a palette where you can squeeze paint onto and mix your colors. If you want to get a little fancy, you can get one of these empty tin cases and fill each little pan with paint. Let it dry completely and you've got yourself a travel case to take along with you. Now here is a set I absolutely can't get enough of. I stumbled on these on Amazon and fell in love. They're a bit pricey, anywhere between $50 and $80, but they are well worth it. The colors are vibrant, super pigmented, and perfect for finished pieces. Now, if you're looking for a little smaller pocket-sized set, I recommend these Jane Davenport paints. They won't break the bank and can be found at Michael's. The colors are nice and vibrant and look amazing on paper. Now, if you want something a little different, these are liquid watercolors. I didn't even know these existed till a couple years ago, but now I can't live without them. They are super concentrated, so a couple of drops will go a very long way. There are a lot of colors to choose from, but they are a bit pricey. But like I said, being so concentrated, they will last you a very, very long time. Okay, so let's talk about brushes. These are the ones I use most often and recommend for beginners. These are water brushes by Pentel, and they are by far my absolute favorite. They can be filled with water for easy watercolor mixing or with watercolors or ink for continuous flow. The bristles are synthetic and come to a very nice sharp point at the end for those awesome thin strokes. If you don't want a water brush, just get yourself a round brush size anywhere from 2 to 4. Different brands have different sizing, so just go with one and see how you like it. Just make sure it's a round brush with a nice sharp tip. These ones are the cheapest ones you can find at Michaels. They are Artists Loft and they get the job done. One last tip, make sure your brush doesn't look like this, flat at the top. Make sure it comes to a nice sharp tip like this one. This way you can ensure those thin upstrokes. All right, so let's talk about paper. If you're just starting out and practicing strokes on letters, there is no need to waste good paper and money. Printer paper will do just fine. This is the one I use most of the time. It's a bit thicker than a regular copy paper. It's 28 pounds instead of 20 pounds, but still cheap. I get these at Target. Just take a look. Can you really tell it's printer paper? Okay, so I wouldn't be using it for final projects or for any lettering that will use lots of water. But for practice, it's perfect. If you're looking to add a lot of texture to your watercolor lettering, you can use watercolor paper. This one is by Canson. It is awesome, cheap, and has a little bit of texture, but nothing too crazy. Another one that's similar is this Strathmore Vision watercolor paper. It's the cheaper one again. Um, it's $10.99 at Hobby Lobby and it has a nice texture, but again, nothing too crazy that will kind of distort your letters and give you those jaggedy edges. Another option is to use mixed media paper or multimedia paper. Just make sure if you're using Canson to take a look at the cover because they have a rough one and a regular one that's not as rough, that's a little bit more smooth. 
So this is an example of the smooth one and you can see it's got a little bit of texture but again nothing too crazy. Alright so let's get to know your brush a little bit. So if you've never done brush lettering um, I suggest you just kind of play around with your brush first and see how you feel about it. So just grab some watercolors and what you want to do first is just kind of practice um, doing some simple strokes and you don't need really a printout for this although um, sometimes it's easier but all you have to do is just warm up your hand basically so just make some lines press very 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 lightly um, just make some down strokes make some up strokes make some up strokes you can make them thicker by pressing a little bit harder and just kind of get the feel of the brush um, also holding the brush is a little bit different than a brush pen or a brush marker because you can hold it straight up and down to create um, some nice circles and stuff so you can't do that with brush markers but you can do it with a real bristled brush so what you want to do in that case is hold it straight up and down and go up a little bit and then down pressing harder and the bristles are going to kind of separate and get give you a thicker line and then very slowly up again see so you can create that downstroke even by holding your brush straight up and down now you can go at an angle which is perfectly fine like this but then your upstroke might be a little bit thicker because you're at an angle but the only thing you have to remember is not to push this way so don't push on your bristles so never go you know like that because then it's gonna kind of push them back and it's gonna ruin the tip so always pull okay all you want to do is just pull the brush along the paper and you'll be fine and all you have to do is just kind of play around like I said so make some lines make some circles make some little zigzaggy things and just kind of warm up your hand just to kind of get the feel of the brush all right so let's start practicing with some worksheets these are the same ones that I offer in the water brush 101 blog series so the link is gonna be below for that if you want to check that out so just start by tracing these light colored strokes so you can do these up or down although the thick ones are always gonna be your down strokes so start at the top press down and then pull it down and then come to a full stop and then lift the brush up you don't want to do this you don't want to lift it as you get down for this stroke, you want to stop first and then lightly lift it up. Now here's a combination of the upstroke and the downstroke. You can do this in one swoop or you can do the upstroke first, stop, lift up your brush and then go down for the thicker stroke. It's up to you, whatever you want and however you want to approach this. This is when it gets a little bit tricky because you have that nice curve at the top. So all I recommend you do is just go really, really slowly, start at the thin line and go up and then very gently start pressing your brush down for that thicker stroke. This one is basically the opposite of that. So you start with pressing down your brush and then pulling it down and then lightly lifting it up for the thin upstroke. So just make sure you go very slowly so that your curves on the top or on the bottom right there um, are very nice and smooth and you get that nice transition from thin to thick. This one is a lot trickier and a lot of people have trouble with this one. It's basically letter C because this curve at the top and at the bottom, you're going kind of in the opposite direction because you kind of have to push those bristles a little bit. 
but the solution to this is you can hold that brush straight up and down like I showed you a little bit ago and it makes it a little bit easier now if it still doesn't work just make sure you hold your brush a little bit differently and see what works for you just because I'm holding my brush in a certain way doesn't mean that it's gonna be comfortable for you so just keep practicing and remember to go really really slowly don't rush through this shape because this is a hard shape to do this is another one that's a little difficult it's basically letter O so you start off with a thick stroke go up for the thin stroke and then again for a thick stroke and then a thin stroke across so it's a combination of a few of those simple shapes that we already did but it's well worth it to learn how to make this one and here's one that's a little bit difficult but a great warm-up exercise before you even start lettering just kind of doodle this on a piece of paper and warm up your wrist and kind of get used to the brush again okay guys that's it for this lesson i hope you learned a lot and i hope you enjoy the worksheets and remember practice practice and more practice also check below the video for a list of all the supplies i mentioned and where you can get them also if you're really looking to kickstart your brush lettering check out the 2018 watercolor brush lettering challenge i have going on right now it's totally free and January already kicked off with more worksheets for you to practice with. So check out the links below and I hope to see your beautiful art on Instagram.